Now the tricky situation here in the other case that we have seen in previously. We have to place the heliocircular screw in this zone and transcircular screw in this zone. The transcircular screw cannot be placed in the S1 segment because that is actually the dysmorphic sacrum and this first sacral segment is actually, is actually the sacralization of lumbar vertebra. It is highly dysmorphic. It is angulated in the coronal plane and angulated in the axial plane as well. X-rays don't give you perfect information regarding dysmorphism. So CT is a must whenever you are planning for transcircular or heliocircular screw fixation. You have to get a CT and realign the cuts and see what is the osseous corridor for the screw placement. Now the first screw, the S1 screw is iliocycle obviously, but in the axial cut you see we have to start bit posterior. Only then we'll be able to go anteriorly towards this S1 segment. So when you are planning for guide wire insertion, your level over the iliac bone will be at the level of S2, almost at the level of S2 and it will be slightly posterior. So this is the area where we want our guide pin to enter to make the screw enter into the S1 vertebral body. So our direction will be like this in the sagittal plane. Now this is the AP 3D image of this patient. So we are not able to appreciate the neural formula here and we are not sure about the screw trajectory as well. Like if you see the APU, one can say that definitely one screw can be placed like this. But when you see the inlet view, you see the vertebral body of S1 is quite anterior compared to the ailer segment here. So the indentation is very high. In the inlet view, you'll be able to appreciate a big indentation here. The S1 ailer segment is quite posterior to the vertebral body. And the same thing is happening on the other side as well. So our screw will enter posteriorly and then will go anteriorly when seen in the inlet view. While in case of outlet view, you see the angulation is now more obvious when we see the foramina here, neural foramina here. So the screw is going to be like this in the outlet view. Now in this case, since the first sacral segment is very oblique, we will try to reduce the sacrum first. We will try to reduce the fracture first using a simpler track. That means the S2 track. The S2 corridor is quite spacious and placement of screw in this corridor is quite easy. So what we have done, a simple method, again placement of the guide pin at the level of S2. This is S1, this is S2 and then checking in the outlet and inlet view, the wire has been further inserted. So here this is one view in which all the vertical bodies and their ailer segments are quite overlapping. You see the anterior, we are not able to separately appreciate the anterior lines of S2 or S1 segment. But still you see we are still able to appreciate this indentation because of the highly dysmorphic S1 segment. This indentation is actually representing the S1 segment here and here. And S2 is quite safe. This line is representing the S2 segment. So the outermost part of the SI joint will be somewhere, which is somewhere here, is representing the S1 segment. Here again, it is the S1 segment. And this part, as we trace here, the S2 segment is end here. And our wire is quite in line with this segment, the S2 segment. And if we want to separately see the anterior margins of the S1 and S2, we can simply reduce the amount of inlet view. By that, we'll be able to bring the S2 segment more anterior compared to the S1 segment. So this anterior flat line is of S2 segment, while this indentation part here, here is the S1 segment. So as we are safely going into the S2 segment, we proceed with the S2 screw. So S2 screw has been placed. You see compression is being achieved at S2 segment for the SI joint disruption and the screw is getting hold on the upper side ailer. And we are quite away from the S1 neural foramina and S2 neural foramina. So this is S2 neural foramina on both sides. This is S1 neural foramina on both sides. And again, I told you, you have to get an obturator view. So you can get an obturator view either in inlet position or in outlet position. Both will give you the perfect view in which the outer table is clearly visible. So here also you see when we are screw tightening the screw, the fracture is getting compressed and the washer is getting perfectly seated over the outer table. And I told you in the previous image also, the S2 segment will appear flat in most of the views. So here also it is appearing flat till here, but appearing oblique here because of the obliquity of the image. Now we have to go for, for S1 screw because it is a bit difficult. So we place the simple screw first and placement of this screw, we were able to appreciate compression at the SI joint. Now place for placement of the screw here, we have to keep our guide pin in the posterior half and at the level of S2 segment. So our guide pin is entering somewhere here, which we had planned in the previous image. And we have to direct this trajectory towards the S1 vertebra. But for that, we have to check the inlet and outlet views. So in inlet view, 
we are placing the guide wire and our direction should be somewhere here but here we are not able to appreciate the indentation that was visible in the previous image because it is somewhat hidden by this screw the s2 screw you can simply change the angle of inlet views by that you will be able to appreciate the indentation so by simply tilting the c arm in inlet view further we will be able to appreciate the indentation so indentation is quite visible here and one more thing here you have to be cautious as you see our entry point is somewhere here the guideway has been passed here so entry point has to be below the level of icd the icd may fall at the level of s2 in some cases of dysmorphic sacrum because i told you dysmorphic sacrum is sometimes is cyclization of the lumbar vertebra so your entry point is still at a lower level below the icd and once that has been done you can simply pass your guide wire while looking for the indentations so here indentation is quite visible and we are passing the guide wire posterior to that indentation while going anteriorly towards the s1 vertebral body you will not be able to pass a guide wire till here because i told you it is a dysmorphic sacrum there is no osseous corridor which can go till here it might be visible in the inlet view but in outlet view it will not be possible so the wire is angulated anteriorly like this in the inlet view as we had planned in the previous image if so if i just forget about the s2 screw so the wire is going somewhere like this like this in the inlet view as you can see in this image and when we check the outlet view the wire is going in the appropriate trajectory it is avoiding the neural foramen here and is oblique and directed towards the vertebral body so this is the trajectory we want if we just try to forget about the s2 screw the wire trajectory has to go here 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 so it has to avoid this indentation it has to be slightly touching or it has to be posterior and only slightly touching this and whenever you are not getting the perfect view like in which the indentation is visible simply tilt the cr more horizontal or less horizontal which will make the indentation quite obvious and one thing you have to ensure that whenever you are doubtful about the exact location of the indentation it's better to avoid the extra screw one screw or two screw in the same segment are more than sufficient for restoring the stability like the patient is going to be on bed rest some kind of setting can be allowed but you have to avoid any extra damage you have to do no harm so when you are not sure about the trajectory better to avoid the better to avoid the difficult tracks you place the screws only in the simple tracks like here it has been put in the s2 and what you can do you can simply place another screw in the s2 segment as you can see the s2 space is wide so you have still space left for a smaller diameter screw in the s2 segment or you can use a same diameter screw also but avoid putting these screws when things are not clear again when you are tightening the screw you have to get an operator view either in the inlet position or in the outlet position that will tell you the extent of the outer table and then you tighten the screw under direct fluoroscopic guidance just for the academic purpose i can show you the ct image of this patient here you see the s1 segment screw is well within the osseous corridor as desired here in the medial part it is well within the corridor in the center part it is well within the bone and in the terminal part it means the entry area it is well within the bone but you see here the entry point is almost at the level of s2 segment this is the s2 segment this shows that we started at the level of s2 and then we went upwards this just to show you the actual meaning of dysmorphism that means you start at a lower level for placement of the iliosacral screw and this is the s2 screw it is also well with bony osseous corridors again i told you the transverse process of s2 is a bit flat compared to the transverse process of s1 which is mostly indented the screw is beyond the neural canal and it is not hindering and is covered by bone throughout so this was just to provide you insights about the sacral anatomy the ways you get the views the ways you can identify the outlines of the s1 and s2 segment which are frequently used for the screw placement and the issue of dysmorphism that means the top part of the sacrum is not straight that you will not be able to place the perfectly centrally placed transsacral screw in such cases and in such cases the iliosacral screw is the option but always ensure that your procedure is safe you place the first screw in the area which you feel is adequate like in some cases it is s2 and in some cases it is s1 when you are placing that screw once you have done with that screw then you decide whether you want the other screw or not and if you are capable enough you can go for that screw but avoid doing any harm if the cm views are not adequate avoid putting the extra screw i know you must be having more doubts you can put those queries in the comments i will definitely be happy to address all these queries in the subsequent presentation thank you for listening